Welcome to this GCSE Biology Unit 1 Virtual Revision Guide and today we're going to be going through cells and all the information that you need to know as a basis for your studies for this. So remember this won't be every bit of content you need, you need to revise around the subject to get those higher grades. So first of all you need to know about microscopes because these are how we study cells and do the study of cytology which is, is the study of cells. And you need to know the different parts of a microscope and be able to sort of talk about them in a method about how to use it. So let's introduce first of all before we get to the microscope what we would do uh, before we get there. So first of all you need to make a slide and a slide basically is a piece of glass and what you would do with a slide is first of all you would have to take your sample and you would add a very very um, small amount of your sample so if it was an onion slide you'd peel off a very thin layer of um, the onion once you've got your layer of onion onto that slide it'd be very thin which makes sure the light can get through it you would add a stain onto that um, onto that onion and a couple of drops normally of iodine now the stain provides contrast so what that means is some parts of the cell look black some parts of the cell look white and that allows you to see clearly different parts of the cell you would then very carefully lower down a uh, cover slip onto the sample we're making sure there's no air bubbles in there by pressing on it very gently most likely with a paper towel on top and that also makes sure that the sample is very thin so you can see it once you've uh, made your slide, then you come to the microscope, and the microscope has key bits you need to know. So the bit at the top of the microscope is called the eyepiece lens. We then have the second set of lenses, which you must know the names of, called the objective lens, and normally there's three in school microscopes. You've got the stage where you place the uh, microscope slide onto it. There's a light source at the bottom, whether that's a light or a mirror. And you've got two focus knobs, the coarse focus, which you use first, and then to adjust to your eyes, particularly the fine focus. Um, and in order what you do then you do the following things so the first thing you would do and this is a slightly more simplified version than you need is you move the stage to its lowest position you place the slide onto the stage and put the clips on you then select the objective lens with the lowest magnification and that's really important you use the lowest magnification to get the first image you then look through the eyepiece lens, use the coarse focus knob until you see your object, and then use the fine focus knob. Now, if you want to look at it in a higher magnification, you then increase the magnification to make the image bigger using the objective lens. Now, you need to understand that the term magnification is the number of times larger an image is compared to the real size of the object. So if I put a microscope slide on there, and let's say I put an ant on the microscope slide, and the ant was one millimeter in size, and then I see that the ant under the microscope, the image size is, say, 10 millimeters, I've magnified it by 10 times. That is different from resolution, and they often ask you about magnification and resolution in exam questions. So resolution is the ability to distinguish between two objects that are close together. Basically, it gives you the clarity of an object. And you might be able to ask to calculate the magnification or rearrange the equation. So I always call this the I am equation because it is, if I want to work out magnification, I do image divided by actual size, or if I want to do um, actual size, I want to do image divided by magnification. And you need to be able to rearrange that equation and you need to memorize it for GCSE. So you also need to know what a eukaryotic cell is. So a eukaryotic cell is an animal or plant cell, but also fungal cells are eukaryotic cells because they have a true nucleus. So they are cells that have the genetic material, their DNA, inside a nucleus and animal and plant cells are often compared in GCSE exams so both of them have a nucleus uh, because they are both eukaryotic cells and we should know the job of the nucleus is what controls the cell and it contains the DNA. Both animal and plant cells have a cytoplasm which is the site of chemical reactions in the cell that's where the enzymes are found that control the chemical reactions. Both animal and plant cells have cell membrane. A cell membrane on the plant cell is this black line on the inside of the cell wall. So don't mistake the cell wall for the cell membrane. And obviously it controls what goes in and out of the plant cell just like the animal cell membrane does. Now both of these cells you can't see them but they both have uh, mitochondria 
okay? Because all living things need to do respiration to release energy. But on top of what an animal cell has, a plant cell also has these green things, chloroplasts for photosynthesis, but they'll only be in plant cells that are above the ground, so not root hair cells. They have vacuoles to help keep the plant turgid, which contain glucose and water or salsa, okay? And they have a cell wall made out of something called cellulose, which again gives them strength and, and stability and maintains their shape, but is only found in plant cells. So plant cells only contain chloroplast, vacuoles, and cell walls, um, whereas they all contain a cell membrane, a cytoplasm, and a nucleus. Now you need to know the jobs of these different cells. So you need to understand that the nucleus controls the cell, that a the cytoplasm is where the chemical reactions take place. The mitochondria, which isn't in this picture, but is found in both cells. And the reason the mitochondria isn't in this picture is because they're too small to be seen under a light or optical microscope. Um, they are the place where respiration takes place to release energy. The cell membrane controls what goes in and out of the cell. The cell wall is a supportive structure on the outside of a plant cell. The vacuole is a fluid filled space in the plant cell that allows the cells to be turgid. Ribosomes are where protein synthesis takes place. And chloroplasts are where photosynthesis takes place in plant cells that are above the ground, so not root hair cells. So continuing from that, then there is also something called prokaryotic cells. And these, in comparison to eukaryotic cells, which remember animal and plant cells are because they have a nucleus, a prokaryotic cell does not have a nucleus. So its DNA, as you can see in this picture, is free within the cytoplasm. Now, there are other differences between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. So prokaryotic cells, they are cells without a nucleus, such as bacteria cells, but they also do not have any membrane-bounded organelles. So that would include mitochondria or chloroplasts. Um, they do have a cell wall, okay, but it's made out of something different from cellulose. Um, they are smaller than eukaryotic cells, and whereas eukaryotic cells are always found as multicellular, these are found as single-celled or unicellular. But if we go down the actual um, organelles, you can see they have a cytoplasm still. So that role of the cytoplasm will be the same as in animal and plant cells. It controls chemical reactions. They have ribosomes. They're smaller ribosomes, but they still have ribosomes, so they would still be used to make proteins. They don't have a nucleus, but they do have DNA uh, is free within the um, cytoplasm. They have plasmid DNA, which you need for a later module. You need to know that plasmid is um, used for antibiotic resistance in bacteria. They have a cell membrane like animal and plant cells, which control what goes in and out of the cell. And like plant cells, but not animal cells, they have a cell wall. But the cell wall is made out of something different. It's called peptidoglycan, which you don't need to know for GCSE, but you do need to know plant cell wall is made out of cellulose. And also the job of the cell wall, just like in plants, is to give it that rigid shape and structure. So you also need to know about some adaptations or some specialized animal cells, so cells that become specialized for their particular function. So we'll talk about stem cells at the minute, but the main animal um, stem animal cells that you need to know about that are, are specialized, they become specialized for a particular role, are muscle cells. And you need to know that muscle cells are used in movement and they're adapted for this movement by firstly being the only cell which is able to contract in a, in a human cell or animal cells, I should say, and in order to contract, they need energy, so they contain lots of mitochondria. The red blood cells' job is to carry oxygen from the lungs to the respiring cells, and in order to carry as much oxygen as they can, red blood cells have no nucleus. They have a biconcave shape, which means they have a large surface area, and they have a red pigment called haemoglobin, which picks up lots of oxygen. Nerve cells are long cells generally in the body, which means they can do communication and carry nerve impulses from one part of your body to another to allow communication. You don't need to know cardiac cells for GCSE, but they are they also are sort of muscle cells and they can contract, but they don't get tired like other muscle cells because they contract for your whole lifetime. And the other cell you need to know about is the sperm cell, commonly asked about but often mis, um, misanswered. So the sperm cell is adaptations are it contains only 23 chromosomes. So that thing that everyone knows, sometimes people forget, is an adaptation. And that's half the DNA needed because half comes from the egg, half comes from the sperm. 
They have something called an acrosome in the head, which has got enzymes in it to help get into the um, into the eggs when they get there, into the egg when they get there. They have mitochondria, so they can release energy from glucose to allow them to swim to the egg. And they have a tail, which allows them to swim to the egg. So notice each time I said that, I've always said what the adaptation is. So for red blood cells, they've got no nucleus, so they can carry more oxygen. For muscle cells, they can contract to allow movement. They have mitochondria to allow movement. For sperm cells, they've got mitochondria to allow movement and they've got tail to allow movement towards the egg so always be specific and link it to the adaptation now you also need to know about mitosis and cell division through mitosis now you do the second type of cell division later on in the course called meiosis so today we're just looking at mitosis and mitosis is vital because mitosis um, is when we take a cell and we do it, we use um, the DNA of that cell is then copied and then splits into two to make genetically identical daughter cells. And the reason that we need genetically identical daughter cells are because we need to grow. Okay, so our cells that replace our pre existing cells um, need to be identical. We might need to repair and replace. So, if you're replacing your skin cells, which ones on the surface are constantly dead, they need to be identical cells that are replacing them. And bacteria and plants will also do asexual reproduction, which also needs to produce identical cells. Now, mitosis occurs in three stages. The first stage is uh, interphase which is when the dna is replicated so the dna uh, doubles in amount and therefore the same amount go the full amount can go into each cell because we've times it by two also in interphase the cell has to grow because if the cell is going to divide then the cell has to uh, get bigger and the membrane has to double in size the mitochondria has to replicate the chlor chloroplasts have to replicate all the organelles have to replicate we then get to stage two that you can see here that once the DNA has divided, uh, doubled, the DNA then has to divide in a process called mitosis, which technically only happens in the nucleus of a cell. And the DNA actually moves to the equator and then is pulled apart to each cell. So the DNA, then the doubled amount of DNA is then split back into two. So each final cell will get a full amount. And then the third stage is called cytokinesis, which means cell division. And the cell splits from the membrane inwards into two genetically identical daughter cells. So if you're asked about um, mitosis, you need to be able to say that mitosis is used for growth, repair and asexual reproduction. It produces genetically identical daughter cells and it happens in the nucleus mainly. And there are three stages, interphase, which is when the DNA is replicated and the cell grows, mitosis, which is when the DNA divides, and cytokinesis, when the whole cell divides. And mitosis produces two genetically identical daughter cells, and it occurs through having DNA replication, then DNA division, which leads to cell division. And the last part of this uh, module is stem cells. Now, stem cells are cells that have not become specialised. Um, they are called meristem cells, which is not on this slide, but it's important for you to know. Meristem cells in plant cells. And in plant cells, they occur in the tips of the root and the shoots only. So the end of the root and the end of the tips of the plant. Um, now, stem cells then have the ability to become many different types of cells. And there are two main forms of stem cells that you need to know about. There are um, embryonic stem cells. Now, this picture is a bit more complicated than we need, but it's, it's a useful picture. Okay, so you need to know there are embryonic stem cells, which can come from an embryo, from something called the blastocyst stage in the embryo. And they have the ability to become any type of cell that we want them to. If you put them in those types of cells, they'll become those type of cells. So they can be really useful for us for potentially treating certain diseases or replacing organs and growing new organs. Um, adult stem cells, however, are um, found in our bone marrow and also we find them in new places such as on the skin, for example, um, and in the nose in one case that they used to fix um, a spinal problem. And adult stem cells can differentiate into a few types of cells. We're finding more and more examples, but not as many as embryonic stem cells. So overall, stem cells could be really useful for us because stem cells can be used uh, to treat diseases that like, for example, hopefully stuff like cancers and leukemia and diabetes. 
possibly looking at um, doing things like dementia and Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Um, they can be used to replace potential body parts without having the risk of um, uh, rejection because you could literally clone yourself, grow yourself into an embryo and use the cells then to, um, to grow a new uh, organ for yourself. So the benefits of potentially using stem cells in medicine is it avoids the need for transplants. You could grow a new organ. Um, the body will not reject the stem cells because they are technically your own cells. So they'll have the same antigens as your normal cells. Your white blood cells won't think they're bacteria and attack them. Um, they could be a permanent cure for some conditions that we can't currently treat like diabetes. And we have, in the last few years, using adult stem cells, managed to cure someone that's been, a couple of people now that have been paralyzed. And we can also cure one type of blindness in the eye by using stem cells in the eye. The problem is, obviously we've said, adult stem cells don't turn into every type of cell. And therefore the better source of stem cells would be embryonic stem cells. But embryonic stem cells are considered an ethical issue because if we use embryonic stem cells, then we are, would have to eventually, the embryo would die. And um, people would think that is ethical because it could be classed as murder if you're killing an embryo afterwards or just using it to harvest the organs as the embryo is life. Um, also, the embryo cannot consent to its own use, whereas an adult could. So therefore, some people would argue that it, should, it can't be done. And this is important never just to say there's ethical issues. You always need to point out the ethical issues. Um, however, there are new potential sources of, of embryonic stem cells, such as the umbilical cord, uh, where once a baby's born, you could potentially pay to have the umbilical cord frozen for later use if needed. So there you go. That is the whole of module one or unit one for biology covered. Um, not every fine bit of detail, but enough to get you going. And hopefully then you'll be able to use your own knowledge and books to build around that to develop your grade.